research. You've all heard the term formative assessment, yes? Yeah, what's some of the research on that? Well, actually, Rick talked about it yesterday when Black and Willem, um, William, uh, two UK psychologists, looked at about 250 studies. Uh, what they said is, you know, classroom assessment, when used well, can actually be one of the most powerful instructional tools that we have. And again, Rick had been talking about this 30 years ago. And he said, no, assessment is not just assessment. It's not a labeling device. Assessment is actually one of the best ways of helping students learn. And then Black and William, their research just really put a fine point on that. Well, let me put a fine point on their research. Uh, if you were to take their research at face value and say this, well, let's take a teacher who's at the 50th percentile in terms of his or her assessment skills. Now, that doesn't make too much sense at first, a 50th percentile for a teacher in terms of assessment skills. Let me explain that. There are about 3.3 million teachers in this country. Does it make sense that if you lined all of them up in terms of their assessment skill, they would form a normal distribution? You got that? This teacher is right in the middle of the distribution in terms of his or her assessment skill. And in that teacher's classroom is a student, and that student is at the 50th percentile in whatever the subject is. Now, if nothing were to change, and you were asked to predict where the student would be three months later or a year later, you'd still predict at the 50th percentile. Make sense? Now, let me change some things here. If you were to take that teacher and increase his or her skill by one standard deviation in terms of assessment, you would predict the student to go up by 13 percentile points. They'd go from the 50th to the 63rd percentile. If you were to take that teacher and increase his or her skill, you know, over two standard deviations to the 99th percentile, you would expect a student to increase by 28 percentile points. Are those impressive numbers? Yes, they are. Most people look at those and they say, well, my goodness, of course. Why don't we look into this? You know, this, this has really strong potential in terms of helping students learn, not just labeling students. Well, what does good classroom assessment look like? Is it just a labeling activity? No. Is it an activity where there's dialogue between teacher and student? Yes. Is the purpose of that dialogue or that interaction for the students to see where they are now, okay, and then where they should be and how to get there? Absolutely. So studies like these, they said, okay, there's some powerful generalizations we're going to call formative assessment or apply to formative assessment. Uh, first of all, some things we know. Uh, the people who are the measurement experts, you know, do agree that a formative assessment is not a specific type of test. Get that? Yeah, it's really not a test. So technically, to say, technically, to say this is a formative assessment and this is a summative assessment, technically that's not accurate. Now, I still use those terms. You're going to use those terms. But technically, it's the use of the assessment, not the assessment itself. And technically, one assessment could be used for formative purposes versus summative purposes, although that's not a good idea. Uh, so we tend to get away from, you know, talking about formative versus summative assessments within our system. Uh, first of all, we try to make some distinctions about how assessments are used and their purpose. And two big ones are forms of assessment versus uses of assessment. So let me go into these. A little, bit, a little terminology here so you can at least understand what I'm trying to say. First of all, forms of assessment. There are really three forms of assessment, and I think we only use one by and large. And those forms are obtrusive, unobtrusive, and student-generated, the most powerful of the three. And for me, you get into that, you're starting to be involved in the revolution. What if you're not sure about the summative score? What do you do? Or a kid says, I think I'm higher. Can you see where student-generated assessments come in there? OK, fine. You think you're a higher score? Show me. So that's, the dialogue is always there. Now, you'll see in a little bit why that dialogue and looking at patterns, uh, data patterns over time is really important for us. By the way, uh, one of the reasons um, uh, we created Marzano Research Lab was to do our own research. Uh, we engage in that all of the time. Uh, if an individual teacher is willing to do a little study where you have an experimental and control group and a little pretest and post-test, give it to us, we'll analyze the data for you. Well, no charge. You just put a, a, make it part of our database. Uh, this is actually an old slide. That 14 experimental control studies is more like 40 now, so I should update it. But anyway, across 40 now experimental control studies and what I just showed you, tracking student progress, what we found is that's associated with a 32 percentile point gain in student achievement. So I could say right now, from my perspective, if you just did that tracking, you know, and then summative scores derived by looking at progress over time, not a single assessment, you would see some, you'd see some gains right now.